All right, number 19, Miami, two-and-a-half-point favorite against Florida. This game in the swamp. The over-under I have is 91 degrees for game time temp. Mm -hmm. I'll take the slight under, but heat index will be much higher. Again, that's all that matters is the humidity, not just the heat. Um, I'd say get ready get for – dad reps in early and often. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I have uh, I probably need to get a shirt that says that, uh, that, that fits the brand very, very well. It does. Um, we're going to get that five o'clock shower because that's just what happens in the state of Florida. So Florida fans, like you already know there, there's, I mean, a lightning delay, uh, that that's coming in this one. Um, that's just the way that we live life this time of year in the sunshine state. I looked up the last time that Florida opened the season at home with a non night game, because this is going to feel weird and it already feels weird talking about it this way. Usually there's a little bit more sense that's put into this. And it's not just as simple as what's the best ESPN, ABC, TV lineup that we can set up. Let's actually factor in what fans would want to see. It's all about the TV viewing experience now. We've talked about that. But the last time this happened, where Florida starts off the season at home, non-night game, 2013 against Toledo. So pre-playoff era. Florida was a preseason top 10 team and went 4-8. and eight. It was a must-champ yeah, special in every right. single way. <laughs> Easy. Heal well. Heal. Um, they actually won the opener by three scores and then dropped two spots in the AP poll ahead of their week two matchup against Miami, who mm -hmm. beat Florida, even though the Gators had a 413 to 212 total yards advantage. Shout out Dan Mullen. But mm -hmm. when you commit 10 penalties, turn the football over not once, not two. When you turn the football over five times, these things happen, and you lose games that you should, probably shouldn't lose. Why do I bring that up? That is the last time that Miami beat Florida. I was at their only matchup since then, 2019, week zero game. Another game that was entertaining, not as entertaining probably as Georgia Tech, Florida State in terms of like down to the wire, but it was entertaining nonetheless. Here's something wild. This will be their fifth matchup in the last 20 years. 2004, 2008, 2013, 2019, and now 2024. Every time these two teams have played in the last 20 years, both teams have had new coaches, like different coaches from the previous matchup. So I'm not saying first year coaches. I'm saying like 2004, think about it. It's like very different. 2008, move up, new coaches again. 2000, like mm -hmm. every single time they are facing off, it's like, oh yeah, Miami is, Miami's coach is facing Florida's coach for the very first time. Weird. Speaks mm -hmm. to the instability that both programs have had uh, at, at, at times throughout the 21st century, at least at the head coaching spots. They play again next year, that game in Coral Gables. What are the chances that both have new coaches again? Hey. One of them will for sure. Um, we just don't exactly know which one. This game could have a huge say in that. Probably yeah, will. Exactly. Probably going to be very important. This game is my clap back to anyone who says the regular season doesn't matter anymore in the 12 team playoff era. Huge game. Have you ever met anyone from Florida? If that's the case, because they are fired up about this one. Very, very fired up. And uh, I, I think that there will be a whole lot of takes going around uh, on both sides. And that's kind of the beauty that those are the games that I love. When we get to overreact to both sides, that's when you know you're watching a game that's carrying some significance. And FSU has already lost. So whoever wins this game can delude themselves factually into thinking they're the best team in Florida. How about Florida and Miami fans both kind of dunking on FSU on Saturday? <laughs> it's like, I, they're coming off a 13-0 start to, to last year. I mean, it's... Ancient uh, history. Let's pump the brakes a little bit. Um, I think Billy needs this game slightly more than Mario does. That might be yeah. obvious, but... As devastating as it would be after an offseason of hype for Miami, in a weird way, maybe it's kind of what they need to maybe get the spotlight off of them and then just creep into contention in a very winnable ACC. I mean, it's part of the reason the Miami hype is there is because the schedule feels like it sets up really well. That Miami roster might not be at its best in the opener. I don't think it will be at its best. A lot of new pieces, the scorching temps. I think Florida plays desperate. I really do. In a game that would be devastating for Florida to lose because of obviously the looming latter half of the schedule, I think Florida's defense makes life difficult on Cam Ward. Maybe those are famous last words, and I'm going to come away from this with even more respect for Cam Ward because I do love him as a player and think that he'll have a really solid year. But I think Florida's issues on that side of the ball defensively have been more about depth down the stretch 
than being able to show up and play a game in August. It hasn't really been, are they ready for the start of the season? Because I think the last two seasons, you've probably felt good if you were a Florida fan about, oh man, this is this is going to be the, the the equation that solves our defensive woes. And th- we, we got things figured out. And obviously things down the stretch have just not worked out. I think we see Austin Armstrong like headbutting dudes coming off the sidelines because he's so fired up. And the broadcast crew is praising the addition of Ron Roberts, even though Billy's answer to the defensive issues that he's had was hiring a guy that's been fired at each of his last two jobs in the last two seasons um, and hired him because of his relationship at Louisiana. But that's a different subject for a different time. And we'll go there if we need to go there. Nonetheless, Toby Keith win for Billy Napier. I placed uh, one of the most confusing friendly wagers in my life. And I think you'll be even more shocked by it, uh, knowing me. Um, so Cam Ward is the runaway preseason all ACC player of the year. And my couple of buddies that are uh, Miami fans, I bet them that Graham Mertz would have a better season than him. Oh, oh, that is, that's interesting. Okay. Um, I don't know why we keep waking up. I've said this on here before. And pretending like we fell out of a coconut tree when it comes to the Miami Hurricanes. Yep. Um, I don't know why we think that suddenly everything is going to change and the cat is going to bark here. Maybe the cat will bark here. And if the cat barks, oh my gosh, what an interesting thing. Let's talk about it. The cat's now barking. Um, every time Miami has dealt with any type of hyper expectation over the course of pretty much my life um, outside of the 2020 season, which we've just admitted did not matter. Mac Jones, Trey Lance, um, you know, what was his name? Wilson on the Jets. Just all of it was made up. That was the only time Miami was kind of good outside of when they hired Mark Richt explicitly, explicably and were kind of good for a year. Did you just call um, Garrett Wilson a fraud? <laughs> I'm not Garrett Wilson. Uh, what's his name? The quarterback from BYU. <laughs> Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Never mind. There's the, okay. There are two Wilsons on the Jets. The one, the quarterback, yeah, Zach. Well, I've tried to Zach Wilson's not on the Jets anymore, so I, I my, my well, brain. Well, yeah, but yeah, they, yeah. you know, no, they, yeah, they tried, didn't they? Anyway, so point being, oh uh, yeah, they did the good Wilson to still there. But point being, um, yeah, like just quarterback play was rough that year. It was kind of my point, and ever everybody was good, so that doesn't really count. And then yeah, again, like that was just a weird year for Miami in 2017. Outside of that, there has not been a year that Miami has even performed near preseason hope or expectations like to just call it expectations not hope because the fans are always above expectations and I just don't think this is the year in a year that Miami's not even predicted to do well that Cam Ward comes in and just does something that you know Herbert couldn't under Mario Cristobal and plays above expectations uh I think that we've given you know this team and this this specific head coach chances to do many things uh and one of them was kneel the football and he couldn't do that uh I I feel like we on the other side of this Billy Napier loves a good press win, loves a good PR win, loves a good preseason or like like early season win. Um, like we always talk about, you know, his win against Utah where I look for like 24 hours or like probably about a week was like, oh, no, this guy is going to be really good at Florida. Uh, and then the rest of his Florida tenure happened, thankfully. Uh, but these like starts to the year, he is a motivator. One thing about Billy Napier, he is a motivator. When you get these type of guys and they're ready, I mean, like the week one games, we saw that under Coach O2, his guys just get guys ready to run through a brick wall. And I think that Mario Cristobal is the exact opposite of that. I think he is a guy that is, we call the CEO, um, but kind of like, you know, I'm not going to get into that. But point being, I, I, I think that this game is exactly poised for a Florida, how do you like me now win? Like you nailed that. And a Miami Oh, we're still Miami performance. And I, and that's the thing. Like they have the talent. I I think their offensive line is going to be better. That's, that's the thing. I'm sitting here trying to rationalize this bet that I made with my buddies. I'm like, none of this makes sense. I want to sit here and tell you Florida's offensive line is worse. They have lost their only receiver. He has trusted for the last, like that has been trusted that program since Billy got there. I, none of this makes sense, but at the same time, Graham Mertz was inexplicably good last year, despite the horrors. And I mean, in terms of like being like a top five or so SEC quarterback, I think he was that. And point being like Cam Ward is a guy that if he had his druthers would have gone to the draft. You know what I'm saying? At the last minute, backed out, went to Miami. But it's not like this is a guy that is like, I am a hurricane through and through, even, you know, the way that Derek King was. So, yeah, I I just think this fit is going to be very Miami. It's going to be very money over, you know, 
fit and 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 the substance i don't think is going to be there and you know maybe if this coaching staff of why do these people keep hiring cajuns connor what is going on the whole florida thing and miami is just full of cajuns they got like former lsu players on the miami staff losing out on dj pickett this is weird anyway i hope that or i i predict that florida's cajuns come out on top uh, they, they could go for their little part of louisiana that these teams are now fighting over but point being uh, I, I i do genuinely think that this is going to start the year off on a good foot. Now, where the second foot goes, we've known this doesn't predict anything, as we saw in, in the Utah win for Florida. But yeah, I just I don't I don't think this is going to get put on a on a hype video to like horrible like Creed music. But I just don't know who's scared of Miami anymore. Like I just don't know what is what horrible. about Miami I should Creed be like oh, music. What? horrible. What you, what what Creed music is horrible. Well, no, but like a 480 highlight that's been like uh, docked down in quality, like when Festus is Ely retired and he had like, anyway, so that was the reference three people got. But anyway, so like, I, I just, I don't know who's scared of Miami anymore. And I think that Florida, like, at least has some things like their, their quarterback position that's just like better. I'm sorry. I, I, I think you need to apologize for saying horrible Creed music exists. I'm, I'm offended. That was... You're right. You're right. This would be more like a 10 years type thing. Yeah, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but if their opinion's wrong, we need to call yeah, call it out. No, you're right. That's I think people like Cam Ward. I think people like the Cam Ward story. I think the, the stuff with him going to the NFL, like the NIL stuff was a little bit weird and all that, but you kind of like go back into like his roots of playing in a wing T offense in high school. He, the only offer he's getting is incarnate word. He ends up playing mm -hmm. in a superstar offense. He gets this opportunity at Washington State. And in this era of college football where we – can actually have access to watching these guys. And we're not just like, well, that quarterback went five and seven last year. He must not mm -hmm. be a winner. I think there is a little bit more of an understanding that Cam Ward is, has a lot of really redeemable qualities as a player. And I think that has fueled a lot of this Miami love. I think that's a big, big part of this. Um, but again, I think it's difficult to go into a place like that and to be able to, to pull off a victory, even at a program that has struggled on that side of the ball. So yeah, I'm, I'm there with you. That is an interesting take about Mertz having a better year than Cam Ward. What would you consider to be a better year overall? Because Ward isn't like – he's not going to light it up from a rushing standpoint. Mertz isn't going to light it up mm -hmm. necessarily. But, like, are we talking quarterback rating? Are we talking like uh, – So, I said yards, touchdowns, quarterback rating. I said, look, I mean – Total I think, yards? Uh, yeah. Okay. I think Van Dyke actually would have won this bet last year. And that's the thing. That That's my only thing. I like Brad Kaya. I like Tyler Van Dyke. These guys went from quarterbacks that I really had a lot of promise to, to Miami fans telling me they were horrible over and over and over again. And I'm like, I like Cam Ward. I really do. I think he's going to be a good player. Uh, I think Miami is where quarterbacks go to die. I think that's just, that's it. I mean, what was the last good quarterback that played at Miami? Ja'Cory Harris had a moment. He had a minute. Oh boy, do I, we can yeah. talk about the Ja'Cory Harris Heisman campaign, but that's how it always goes, right? It's like, it gets built up and then it just implodes at the worst possible time. I remember seeing Brad Kaya came to was that 2014 at nebraska i think it was and i covered that game and i was like brad kaya is jesus christ that guy is the truth he is yeah. awesome um a little bit of a tougher time living up to that uh might have been apex mountain for him that that year 2015 i guess he had a cup of coffee as well another nice performance against nebraska the following season um but yeah the the way that it is just always falling apart like dear king was the guy that was built for this modern era of football. And I remember the Ross mm -hmm. Dellinger story about him and all these NIL opportunities that Miami was taking advantage of with him. And he was this, this guy that was going to be built to finally play in this modern offense that they were going to run. And they've had moments, they've had moments offensively, but for whatever reason, they just haven't found that guy quarterback. Maybe Cam Ward is, maybe this is the launching point. I still think Florida wins.